Okay, Mr. Chairman, it's all yours. Ready to go. Thanks, Bruce. Good afternoon. Welcome to this meeting of the Deep Creek Watershed Board of Zoning Appeals for the 20th day of June 2024. At this time, we request that you turn off your all cellular devices. Uh, at this point, I will call the meeting to order. We have a quorum present today. Um, there is four members on your board present. I will be recusing myself from voting, so you will only have three voting members in today's board. In the event of a three-member board, you need a unanimous decision to uh, to uh, be uh, successful today. I'm your I'm your board chairman, Bruce Swift. To my left is a uh, board member, Bill Ingram, Steve Nagy, and Bob Hoffman down there on the end. We are your Deep Creek Watershed Board of Zoning Appeals. We are appointed by the County Commissioners and serve at their pleasure. The purpose of this board is to provide competent interpretation and full equitable, equitable application of the Deep Creek Watershed Zoning Ordinance. Gentlemen, in your packet, you should have received minutes from our last meeting, which I think was two months ago. If there is no revisions or corrections, I'd look for a motion to approve as written. Make a motion to approve. Second. I'll second it. Approve, Bruce. Thank you. We will move on to the public portion of our hearing. Today we only have one case. It is a variance case. Um, it's represented today uh, from two months ago when we, again, did only had three voting members and could not re reach a unanimous decision. Um, Bruce, is there any correspondence we want to read uh, for, um, in favor of this or in opposed to this uh, variance request? Neither. Thank you. Okay. We still re retain the same number, 840, I guess. So this is variance request 840. Submitted by Brian and Christine Weaver for a variance to allow the construction of an addition to connect a detached garage to their home. The proposed construction would place a single family residence to within 34 feet of the front setback. The property is located at 448 Clark Lower Road, Swanton, Maryland, 21561, tax map 59, parcel 14, grid 15, and is zoned Lake Residential 1. Who's going to speak in favor of the application today? Right. Mr. Weaver, will you step up to the microphone, please? <clears throat> Do you swear and affirm that the testimony you're about to present to the Deep Creek Watershed Board of Zoning Appeals is the truth? If so, answer I do. I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Brian Weaver, 448 Clark Road, Swanton, Maryland. Please proceed with your presentation. So, um, all your, I assume, have the full package and have had an opportunity to visit the site, so I think you can kind of um, describe it to you. Is that correct? Wonderful. Let's see if you had. Uh, thank you for considering this variance request for a home located at 448 Carlsville Road, Swanson, Maryland. This variance is being requested pursuant to section 157 165 of the UCL Watershed Zone Ordinance to construct a weatherproof breezeway. Between our home and a currently detached garage, which is a permitted use in this zoning district. Uh, the factors giving rise to our request for variance result from the uh, change in the offset requirements from the property, front property line for a small portion of our garage when it becomes attached to our home by the proposed uh, breezeway, as was described earlier by um, Bruce Webb. The offset requirements for homes is 40 feet, as I'm sure everyone is familiar. The southeast corner of our garage is roughly well, exact 34.8 uh, feet uh, on the front property line, which, when connected to our home by the proposed breezeway, is within the 40 foot offset requirement. But the total area of the garage crossing the 40 foot line, because this is not a, you know, it's not a parallel line, it's at an angle, so it doesn't cross the entire structure, it doesn't, it's simply the corner of the structure. Um, so the uh, uh, total area of the garage crossing the 40-foot restriction line amounts to an equilateral triangle of 5 feet on the, on the side, equating to a total area of 12.5 feet of, shall we say, defending structure crossing the line. Power standards of the Board of Zoning Appeals to adapt to the strict interpretation of the chapter in the case, in the case of exceptionally irregular, narrow, shallow, or steep lots or other exceptional physical conditions which, uh, whereby such strict application would result in practical difficulty and unnecessary hardship to the landowner. 
Uh, please note that our lot has an irregular triangular shape that, is, that significantly restricts the land available for construction, which was a factor in the site of the home and a detached garage of the, uh, on our property at the time of this construction. So our property is literally a triangle, and, uh, and this garage has to be stuck up in the uh, constrained area, which creates this um, uh, uh, the, the issue of uh, much regard. Our court request is not contrary to the public interest, but if denied, would result in practical difficulty and unnecessary hardship considering the frequent severe weather conditions in Garrett County throughout the year, such as today, and particularly during the winter months. The proposed improvements for our home are in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the zoning ordinance and actual chapter, are not injurious uh, to nor alter the character of the neighborhood, will not impair the adequate light nor air to the adjacent properties, will not impair views, importantly, uh, to the adjacent properties, not the sight line to anyone's home, or be otherwise detrimental to public rights and welfare. So that's essentially the, uh, the sum and substance of our presentation. I would note that to the extent that precedent matters in these sorts of decisions, the property immediately adjacent to our 478 Clark Hall Road came before this board, asked for a grant to move the entire home 50 feet closer to Clark Hall Road, and it was planted. And for the same reason, because of the irregular triangular shape of their lot, which is the Paired image to what amounts to a parallelogram. We've got one triangle, they've got the other triangle, and similarly kind of constrained spaces in this board granted a three foot grant for the entire structure. So, once again, uh, thank you for doing our request. <clears throat> We're here to answer any questions you might have. Board members, any questions for Mr. Weaver? Yeah, I've got two. Um, Mr. Weaver, are you the original owner of the property? No. So we bought a report from Mitchell Burdett, who had it constructed by Kurt Myers, who might remember him, mm -hmm. John Cone. So Kurt built it, uh, Mitchell Burdett contracted it, constructed it, and uh, essentially at the time of completion sold it to us. I see. I see. Okay. So we had no involvement whatsoever in the design and mm -hmm. siting. And it's my understanding that the construction happened uh, while the ordinance was in place. Uh, so um, to that point, um, it, it, it was. Uh, to that point, I would ask that, you know, and again, you weren't part of the decision of the construction and the location of the, of the garage. Um, so my question, I guess, is, uh, more of a point that the garage with someone more forethinking could have worked within the confines of the, the footprint that you had to build. You know, with this breezeway, you wouldn't be here in front of us if it were shifted sh slightly to include that 12.8 cubic feet. Right, I was changing myself. So, so if the construction, it had they had the foresight to do that. Right. Um, and I guess my final question then is, can you tell me the dimensions of the breezeway that you're proposing to build? On the order of uh, 10 to 12 feet wide, that, that's depth wise, and yeah. then length wise, the distance between the home and the garage, I think it's around. Yeah, I, 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 you may have noticed a couple of times I walked around today looking at the distance, it was more the width that I was interested in, yeah. so 10 to 12 foot width. Yeah, it basically lines up. We have two uh, rooms we have a bedroom and a bathroom. Uh, our general plan is to line up those walls to connect your across. The existing structure with lines of the electricity and plumbing, etc. Mm -hmm. and That makes sense. That's all the questions I have at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Weaver, have you looked uh, either with or without a contractor at any possible alternatives other than constructing a breezeway? Uh, yeah, talk to tens if not hundreds over the last 20 years. So I've been kicking this can around. These things are expensive. Uh, and finally worked its way to the top of our priority list. You know, there's been a conversation about it. At the end of the day, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> if you want to be out of the weather, there's exactly one solution to that problem. You've got to enclose a breezeway to get there. I, you know, I've never had a contractor ever offer any other solution than that. Because everything else is basically walk between the two structures. Now, if anybody here on the board got a suggestion, I will reward it. Please share it with me. But uh, don't mean to just flip it like that. I don't know any other way to do it. And I've 
Well, if you have hundreds of contracts or something, do you know what's offered as alternatives than, than that? And the only, the only other alternative is an open breezeway. That's not, just not of our objective. It's more the breezeway weather outside in the middle of January in Carroll County. Thank you. Yeah. No further questions, Mr. Chairman. Anybody else like to speak in favor of the application? I'll, I'll just make a brief statement. Just stand up there, please. Oh, if you're done, Mr. Weaver. Thank you. You're done? Okay. Your name for the uh, for the record, please. Can you all hear me? Yes, I'll just I can. Over here. You swear and affirm the testimony you're about to present to the Deep Creek Watershed Board of Zoning Appeals is the truth. If so, answer I do. All right. Name and address for the record. Four four eight Park Road. Okay. Please please proceed. The only thing I'd like to add to it is because the last time we were here before the board, there's a question raised of why do you need it? You've lived with the property for 20 years. We own the property and raised our children there since 2002. Yeah. But um, we uh, were just renting it seasonally. We did vacation rental. We were only in the house part time. But since 2020, 2019, 2020, um, our lifestyle has moved more to Garrett County and we're permanent residents by and large at this point in time. And the house needs renovation. And just like families evolve, properties evolve, you know, you know, there's all kinds of things you can do. We're in the process of renovating the house to more to be more suitable to our needs now as it being a home. And so, whereas we worked in the uh, a house to house in the winter time and in the prior decade, we are now, and it's become a real problem for us. Especially as we get older, we're on a, a, a lot that's steep. We get a lot of water, and it is icy. I mean, we really frequently cannot melt the ice. So it's um, it's a challenge for us to try to walk from where we park our cars into the house and we've fallen, guests of ours have fallen. And so because of how we now use the house, which is how we used to use it, and the fact that we're doing renovations, modifications, uh, that would one, one would generally want to do over time. Um, that is part of the reason why we're asking for this as well. Any questions for Sue? They're really good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. So I'll assume there's nobody speaking in opposition. And again, uh, no correspondence one way or the other. So at this time, we will close the uh, public portion of our meeting. You're welcome to stay as we uh, deliberate um, over the uh, facts of the case. Thank you. I'm on the border here, guys. I understand, you know, of getting older and needing the covered area between the two. <coughs> but at the same time, we're taking a uh, property that right now meets all the standards and uh, trying to change it to where it doesn't. Um, I just like to hear everybody else thinks, too. Yeah. Um, like you, Steve, you know, I can look through, you know, the, the requirements to meet uh, the standards of a variance, and I think Mr. Weaver did a good outlining of those issues that um, will not be disturbed, will be in harmony with the property, it won't interrupt anyone's view. Um, my sticking point comes back to the hardship. Um, that that must lie within the property. It's kind of why I was making the point that the property, had it been built with foresight to this kind of thing, um, the property, to my way of thinking, this is where I'm struggling with it, didn't create the problem because there was, at that time, was a solution to the problem. Mm -hmm. um, certainly it made it a smaller envelope to go into. Mm -hmm. um, but I can see where we've got everything checked off the list here that you're required to prove for the variance with the exception of the hardship being a cause of, of the property. And that's where I'm stuck. And I guess the other issue I have on here is um, the, the variance of five foot for the proposed lean to shed mm -hmm. on there. It's saying there's so actually, you know, 
if I'm reading this correctly, the variant, what we're asking for today is two variances, one for the walkway and one for the shed, correct? Um, Mine says a variance of five foot is also requested for a proposed lean to shed to be placed along the eastern side of the pre existing garage. Yeah, I know. That's actually going to be within the 15 foot setback requirement. So we're okay with that? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's good. They have it proposed to go. The existing garage right now is 20 feet from that. Um, rear or side, uh, depending on how that's, uh, I guess that would be interpreted as a side. Um, yes. So, um, it could, it would be 15 feet from there is what it, the requirement is. So it, which you're currently you're... 20 and the shed would bring it to 15. Bring it to 15. Mm -hmm. So the shed doesn't need a variance. No. I'm just, it's, I'm just reading the way it's worded on here. As I said, a variance of five foot is also requested for a proposed lean to shed. No, I think it was just also proposed on the, I, I may have worded that wrong, wrongly. Okay. Sorry. So today what we are working with is strictly the variance for the connection between the house and the garage. Oh, you're reading that from the statement, mm -hmm. not from my correct. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. I my didn't, my I didn't see my that um, outline of VR840 is correct. Okay, it's it's only the that front 34 foot. Okay, right. to approve. All in favor? All opposed? Aye. Aye. Two to one again. Two to one again. Okay. All right. Bruce, do we have any uh, old business? We do not. New business? No. Okay, the next meeting is July 18th, 2024, at 3 o'clock. We'll make a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Second. So, okay. Thank so you. we're basically back where we started, Brian, um, or ended last time. Do you. Uh, I, we can put this back up again for the next hearing, but um, what I would suggest to you is to, um, if, if you're not in a big hurry for this, to wait a few months and um, hopefully we get more cases and we can uh, get everybody on the board in here uh, for a full um, examination of this one more time. Um, we, and we we'll have, hopefully, five people to vote here. Okay. 
So the, the right two against one four. It's two Correct. against one against. Uh, Bruce has not voted. He's recused himself. Correct. Correct. Two four one against last time. So he went reverse for now. Correct. One four two against. We're making progress. All right. So um, great. We chat about getting back on the agenda. Okay. okay. Gentlemen, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Are we adjourned? We are adjourned. Oh, Do we need to fill out the form? Yes. Mm -hmm.